She is at home thanks to COVID-19 return to play protocol. It is their co-captain, Te Hungereo Selby Rickett, and she joins us now. How are you feeling and how was that watching from home, Hoochie? Um, hey everyone, I feel good actually. Um, it's been a while, it's been about two weeks now, so I'm getting a bit antsy, but yeah, loved Love the game. Obviously, the last quarter and extra time was an, a highlight. Um, but, yeah, amazing. So proud of them. I thought, oh, yeah, it was just amazing. 11 goals in one quarter is insane. And to fight back like that, first I was saying bonus point, bonus point, bonus point. And then suddenly I was like, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. We could actually win. And they and they did that in the end. So, yeah, super proud of them. And, yeah, kind of expected but very unexpected. At the same time, that's a huge margin to pull in. Sarah Fina wolf Amazing. Yeah. Were you jumping yeah. off the couch as she was going for those intercepts? Like, what did you yes. think of her, her match? Oh, she was unbelievable. Um, like, things have been injured, um, oh, sort of injured quite a lot. And so she's had this kind of build up and, and called, pulled out of trainings and monitored. So to see her play like that and really like show what she can do, I was, yeah, so excited for her. And yeah, I just thought she was amazing. And it was great to so everyone could finally see how good she is. What sort of viewer are you, who? Are you the sort of person who just sits quietly and it's all going on inside, or are you out there and loud? I'm a quiet viewer. Um, oh. I just sit there and kind of go, ooh. Like, I get quite <laughs> nervous, and I don't overly celebrate, because, I, I don't know, I don't try, I try not to celebrate till the game's over and it's won, because um, I've seen a lot of early celebrations and then suddenly you're, you've lost, and so I just try to keep quiet until I know we've won. But I'm, I'm quite a quiet... Um, yeah, quiet celebrator. You and Ali Wilshire and coach uh, Ringa Blossom <laughs> all at home. Were you guys watching together? Were you texting the whole time? No, we're all split up because I, I actually got it first. And so my seven days was up about a, a week ago. Um, Curly, Ali, and that got it last week. Um, Ali's in the mount. Curly's at home. Like we were all in different stages um, of it. So yeah, we're not together, but um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully really, really soon. How tough was it? I, I can't think of the last time you sat on the sideline and had to watch a match. Mm. You're always in these big matches. <laughs> How hard was that? Just one, being on the sideline and two, having to watch from afar. That must have just been like doing your head in. Yeah, it, it, it is. The thing is, I'm actually a great netball watcher. I love watching it whether I'm supposed to be there or not. I obviously would prefer to be there. Um, but yeah, you're right. I haven't, um, I haven't actually missed that many games at all. I've, I've never had an injury that's kept me out, which is, I don't know what that says, either great physio or <laughs> yeah, I'm not dynamic enough maybe <laughs> um, to, get a, a, to get a serious injury. But um, yeah, it, it is really, really tough because you want to give them advice and you want to cheer them on and all that. Um, Last, the Mystics game was really tough because that was the first one, but this is the second one and I'm kind of used to it even though it's still only two. Um, but yeah, it's really tough. You just want to give them advice and all that kind of stuff. But it's a good learning just to be able to sit there and let them sort it out for themselves and, and let them work through it. And they obviously, they obviously can, so that was really, really good to see. Her, I'll let you know, you haven't actually missed a game since 2016 for the Steel. You were <laughs> set to bring up your 100th consecutive match before... Uh the spicy cough, which is a real shame, but I mean, I <laughs> you're a legend of, um, you know, elite netball in this country, which is why you have been named as one of the top 25 in our 25 years of elite netball. How special was that? Mm. Oh, I didn't even really know. I, I, th I almost find it quite embarrassing just because there's, like, I saw the list because we were all supposed to pick 25 and I could not do it. There was over 500, nearly 600 names on that list. And I could have picked literally 200 people easily. And so to pick 25 is just crazy. And yeah, it was a wee bit embarrassing because there's so many great players out there to choose from. But yeah, it's a real honour. It's probably because I haven't been injured in nearly that whole time. <laughs> and so I've just been hanging around um, the whole time. But yeah, it was, it was amazing. And yeah, such an honour to be on that list with yeah all those people and many more who weren't, who weren't on there that kind of should have been on there. Who there's 11 of the 25 have played for the steel. Yeah. Yes, I did do that calculation, uh, Jenny and Storm, just to, you know, give the what steel a surprise. A <laughs> steel sting. But I was in that sting team many years ago when you were, I I'm thinking 16 uh, or 17, yes. and you came yeah, down. Yeah, 16. Uh, Robin brought and brought you down. Like, what are those memories of being a schoolgirl and mm. coming into a team, you know, Finis Mini? Leslie Rumble, like that must have been pretty yeah. insane. 
it was it was insane and when i think about it um because i came for the fly from the flyers which was even insane to be in that team um as well so i'd grown up around the area but um the sting were just always on tv i know they only had one or two games back then on tv and so i always watched them and obviously just thought they were they were the best and so when robbie asked me to move down there i was like what why <laughs> what do you want me because i just thought i just wasn't up to it and i probably wasn't up to it but the opportunity to go and play with like the likes of yourself donna leslie who else was there like anna i could i just couldn't believe it i was like what the heck and even when i yeah, even when I got there, I was just like, what am I doing here? And I was still at school. So I was just like, I was almost like a fan coming to training to watch and then going to school. Like, I, I just felt like I shouldn't have been there. But it was awesome. I just learned so much. And I, I just got to sit there week in, week out and just watch, like, the best players in the world play and see their competitiveness and how they won. Because Robbie always says, like, winning, you learn how to win. It's not if you want to be consistent. It doesn't just happen. You have to learn how to do it and to see how you guys did it. Um, was just amazing and it taught me so much and I'm, I, I know I was so lucky but yeah it was a huge cultural change and all that but it was worth it because the experience and the st stuff I got to see and learn from that was yeah amazing. I've always been impressed who by your loyalty to, to the team but also particularly to Robin Broughton like you you know you followed her up to the polls you came back when yeah. she came back what was it about her that well for a start how did she pick you up and and that made you, <laughs> you and your family trust her you were, you know you were young i know yeah that is quite amazing i don't know if you guys have met my mother but it is amazing that my my mum trusted her <laughs> and especially to Invercargill because i think he's a very maori environment and that's what i'd grown up in speaking maori pretty much all day every day and for her to, to say yes you can go down to Invercargill actually blows my mind because even now i'd be shocked if she she did that again um but yeah, I met Robin at, at NPC. It was after one of our NPC games in Dunedin, and I saw her talking to our mum, and I knew who she was, and I just thought, Mum, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I just thought she had just rocked up to Robin and started talking to her because she was a fan of hers, and I was a bit embarrassed. But yeah, I got there, and she asked me to come down, and I can't explain what Robbie's like. She's just amazing. Like, she has trust in, your, in her players, and then so you have trust in her straight away but our kind of games clicked very early and I and I don't know if it was her teaching me or, or was already there but she definitely brought it out a lot um but what I loved about her she she kind of teaches you to think for yourself on court and she puts you in positions at training to that kind of challenge you extra d extra passes but she still lets you think for yourself um because she knows that's what you have to do when you're playing netball so that kind of style really clicked with me and yeah obviously I stayed with her for as long as I could. And Hooch, of course, back in those days, you were a shooter. You're down the other end of the court. Oh. Your transition to a defender, can you tell us a bit about that? And was it Robbie that kind of, you know, saw that in you? So I was at this 21 camp and decided <laughs> I wanted to jump. And because I'd been doing kind of both, um, yeah, it was kind of easy. And I hated shooting. But the thing is, I was so happy I did the transition. I was like, yes, this is me. Goodbye shooting. But Robbie was still using me as a shooter at school. And I honestly just wanted to change. But... Yeah, I'm really happy I did it now. I take my head off to shooters. It is a terrible, great but terrible job that, that they kind of have. And I love being on the other end, just trying to get the ball for them. I feel your pain, who? Once upon <laughs> yes. a time, I think I debuted for New Zealand at Gold Shoot and I was like, get rid of this. Oh, this is hideous. Who wants this pressure? You might be able I to know. be the superstar Horrible. when it goes in, but yeah, far more relaxing outside that shooting yeah. circle. Um, but. For me, you know, Jen touched on your loyalty, but you have stayed, mm -hmm. like, what is it about Invercargill? You know, I love Invercargill. My husband's from Invercargill. <laughs> I played there all those years. But not only have you stayed there, but you've dragged your family mm -hmm. south too. Your sister's been there, your brother's up in Dunedin. Like, what is it about yeah. that deep south that goes, I want to live here? I'm not too sure. I, I just get so comfortable here. Um, it is nothing like where I'm from, but it isn't the same that it's kind of still a small community. You know, everyone sort of knows everyone or everyone talks to you um, like they do know you a lot. Um, and yeah, it just felt very similar to home, but also opposite to home. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it was me that pulled them. I, I, I know my sister definitely moved down to Dunedin to go to university there and ended up staying here. Um, and yeah, I'm not sure what happened with Manaki. I think I did pull him down here, actually. One of the rugby coaches asked me what he was doing. And he wasn't up to much. So, yeah, we I pulled him down here. But, yeah, I don't know. I just love how easy it is to get around here, how everyone just 
has your back how we have the stadium over there that just has everything you can want our gyms there the tracks there all the courts are there um and all the staff nigel who runs the stadium is just so good to us um yeah i don't know it's the comfortability and how small this place is how easy it is to get around and how kind of we hang out with each other a lot in the team um because it doesn't take you know an hour or half an hour to get to each other it's it's a minute or two so yeah you just get really close with your teammates and just hang out with them non-stop um but yeah i'm, I'm not quite sure what's kept me down here that long um probably just being comfortable down here and being so far away from my mum maybe <laughs> <laughs> she actually doesn't watch this well, they seem to follow you around. Your parents are everywhere. But what I wanted yeah. to ask you was, um, this is your 18th season, I think. And yeah. I was just sort of curious, really, as to what is it that keeps you going back, staying in this game? I mean, is, are we are we going to see, what, four, five more years out of you? Are you going to be a oh, Liana de Brain no. at 44? <laughs> good, no, good God. Um, I don't know. I think every every time I can't finish a preseason, I'm like, why am I doing this? I hate this. Um, but then you get into the games, and I think it's the like the competitiveness of the games, like that game like against the Pulse last night, that kind of thing. That you know, you're either up or down by one, and you know you need one turnover, and, and the crowd's going crazy, and you're just trying to get it, or that kind of thing. Like I love that part of the game, that kind of excitement. So that's what keeps me coming back. But honestly, every year I swear I'm never going to play again. And then suddenly it just rolls around and on back. Um, but yeah, and hanging out with the girls, we're, we're so lucky. You know, we this is our job, and we literally the trainings are terrible, but you're always doing it with all your mates. And even though we're doing some terrible shuttles, oh god, you you just kind of look down and something one of your friends says just make you laugh, and then you realise how lucky you are to be able to train, get these programs done for you. You just have to turn up and do them. Um, yeah, and no one else really gets to do that, and so yeah, just and the thought of doing another job, good God, I'd be I'd be terrible at nine to five. So yeah, just, there's heaps of little small things that just keep me coming back every year. Fantastic, Herbal. Well, we are stoked to hear that you're not going anywhere anytime soon, and we can't wait oh. to see you back out on court. All the best for your return to play, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you. No problem.